course, uh, the vote of Vice President Mike Pence was needed to break a tie in the United States Senate when it came to allowing debate to move forward when it comes to repealing and replacing the Affordable Care Act. On this vote, the yeas are 50 and the nays are 50. The Senate being equally divided, the Vice President votes in the affirmative and the motion is agreed to. Senator John McCain was the critical vote after Republican Senator Murkowski and Collins uh, voted against a procedural motion. McCain flew in from Arizona against doctor's orders where he was recuperating from brain cancer surgery just 11 days earlier. Now, of course, President Trump, who won two years ago, said McCain was not a war hero because he was captured, praised his efforts to return to D.C. to vote on the motion while criticizing those Republicans who voted against it. I want to thank Senator John McCain very brave man. He made a tough trip to get here and vote. So we want to thank Senator McCain and all of the Republicans. We passed it without one Democrat vote. And that's a shame, but that's the way it is. And it's uh, very unfortunate. We had two Republicans that went against us, which is very sad, I think. It's very, very sad for them. Oh, it's so sad. McCain, of course, received a thunderous ovation from both sides of the aisle, now facing his own mortality. The senator did not hold back, saying he would not vote for the GEO health care bill in its current form and criticized President Trump and Senate Republicans on how they've gone about pushing the bill forward. We've tried to do this by coming up with a proposal behind closed doors in consultation with the administration, then springing it on skeptical members trying to convince them that it's better than nothing. That it's better than nothing? Asking us to swallow our doubts and force it past a unified opposition. I don't think that's going to work in the end, and probably shouldn't. So Danielle Dawes, author of 150 Years of Obamacare, joining us via Skype from Atlanta. Also on our panel, uh, we have uh, Ray Baker, Angela Saylor, and Dr. Greg Carr. Uh, Danielle, I want to go with you. As you watch this whole debate play out, uh, it is abundantly clear Republicans desperately need to pass something for the purpose of satisfying their uh, right-wing constituents. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, while we're celebrating still the fact that this law has more lives than a cat, I think this new effort underway brings the ACA to its closest brush with death. And it's a clever but dangerous strategy, in my opinion, um, because they have not looked at engaging in a bipartisan manner. They have not engaged in thoughtful consideration and committee um, um, negotiations. And I think that is going to be the downfall of this effort as we move forward. Also, what you have, you have here, you really have no plan. I mean, you, you have Republicans who literally do not even know what they're voting for. You're, you're absolutely right. They have no idea what they're voting for. They essentially took the American Health Care Act from the House. They took that bill. They have wiped it clean now probably five times. And they've been offering amendment after amendment. But quite frankly, they're just throwing whatever they can at the wall, seeing what sticks. And to me, that is a very dangerous act to do. Uh, let's go to our panel here. Uh, Greg Carr, when you look at uh, what's going on here, everyone is lauding uh, McCain for coming back and, uh, and voting. But the reality is he voted to allow it to move forward. Uh, you know, fine, you want to have the debate. But at the end of the day, to give a speech talking about how we need to restore order, but you're still going to be voting on a bill that well, there's no order. That's right. And John McCain has been a typical Republican. His, his maverick stuff has been kind of, you know, overhyped, I think. I, I'm very much encouraged by what happened yesterday. Uh, kudos to Br Brother Green and the CBC. Jeff Sessions shouldn't have been there. He uh, talked about sanctuary cities yesterday. And uh, at the same time, Trump was talking about it. Jeff Sessions trying to carry out that, that, that agenda. And he would never have been the attorney general. This is his dream job. And I'm encouraged by this, uh, this, this health care debacle. Last night, they couldn't push the most uh, expansive uh, version of this trucked up bill that they tried. And so they only could get 43 votes. I guess what I'm saying is yesterday was a good moment because I think if we press the advantage now for progressive causes, this whole thing could fall apart. Angela? Yeah, you know, McCain, McCain took an interesting position to me in terms of the vote and also his speech. It was kind of like having your cake and eating it, too, <laughs> at the same time. So we are in a place now where we've got a debate going, where, where he has called for, you know, an open discussion about something that's so critical to our country. Right. And I think that Angela hit it right on the head. Senator McCain has largely lived on this reputation as a maverick. His rhetoric 
often seems like it's bipartisan or seeks to find the common ground. But his voting record has always been consistently Republican. He's right. told the line. He's had some ratings from the uh, uh, Planned Parenthood and other organizations that indicate that he's pro-life. Ratings from the NAACP that indicate that he's anti-affirmative action. Ratings from labor unions and UFCW that say indicate he's pro-management. These are largely overwhelmingly Republican points, yet he gets to come back with the rhetoric at the end that says we should come together to have bipartisanship. Mm -hmm. uh, Congressman, uh, again, uh, what's so stunning here, you have President Trump uh, whining in the Rose Garden there about not getting any Democratic votes. There was no debate. There were literally, there, there were, there been no hearings, no opportunity for motions. And so to hear Republicans whine saying, well, Democrats didn't step up, I'm sorry, <laughs> please show me the evidence uh, where there was an effort to have an actual discussion. Absolutely. The Republicans have hijacked a Supreme Court nominee. Now they're lowjacking health care. Uh, they're doing things that we cannot imagine decent people doing to other human beings, kicking 22 million people off of health care. And if you go to the bill that's a stripped down model, you'll kick 30 plus million off, as many as 33. Many people say the CBO score is probably not accurate. Well, what we don't talk about is the fact that if it's not accurate, it could be accurate in that there could be more people right. kicked off as opposed to fewer. Daniel, I want to go to you. Bottom line here is uh, uh, when, you, when you look at w what Republicans are doing, um, no one knows what the hell they're doing. And that is scary when you're talking about one-sixth of the U.S. economy. That's exactly right. And I actually want to piggyback on the last comment when we talk about even the skinny bill that they're calling, where they would try to eliminate the individual mandate or the employer uh, requirement to offer insurance to employees, as well as the medical device tax. Even that would result in about 15 million people becoming uninsured. So that is, again, very scary. And I'm not quite sure, as they're thinking about strategy, you know, my assessment is, you know, at what number would they feel comfortable then um, in, in terms of um, resulting in, in an uninsured rate? So is it 15 million, is it 10 million, is it 5 million people becoming uninsured? And that would then uh, appease them? You know, as, as we look at the strategy, the bottom line is that we've gone from repealing and repenting to repealing and delaying and now repealing and replacing, and we're going back full circle. And this is just an opportunity for them to buy more time. They're gonna go to this skinny version, I believe. They're gonna then use this time to reconcile with the um, House and do a conference, and then try to get something um, eked through that uh, we quite frankly don't even know what that's gonna look like yet. And again, they wanna, do, they wanna pass something which is also what's scary. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m on TV One.